Hello to everybody. Thank you for uh, coming, participating in this uh, webinar, where uh, Andrea and I will uh, talk about uh, Displaced Chris um, and uh, how to bring repositories and uh, the Chris systems together. So, as uh, many of you already know, I hope all of you, Dispace is the most popular free open source digital asset management system in the world, which is used basically mainly for institutional repositories to manage uh, research publications and research outputs. But from the point of view of higher education and research institutions, uh, it's more and more needed the um, requirement of managing research information and uh, uh, research data. So, uh, since uh, many institutions already have a digital asset management system, why not using an extended version of DSpace um, to meet these uh, two uh, recent relevant needs? In 2009, the team that is now at Four Science, uh, which is led uh, by me and uh, by Andrea Bollini, Together with the team at the Hong Kong University, which was uh, led by David Palmer, created Dispace Chris. What is Dispace Chris? It is an extended version of Dispace. I put extending in brackets because, in, um, uh, in quotes, because uh, uh, it is much more than that, of course, but you will discover it uh, during the, the webinar. Uh, basically, with a powerful and flexible data model that is able to discover and to manage not just the research outputs and publications, but all the entities uh, that populate the research uh, ecosystem and uh, all the links that these entities bring to each other. Here on the slides you find a couple of uh, links uh, which are important. The uh, documentation about this space crease on the DuraSpace um, uh, wiki and uh, a link to, to our demo site that you can use to uh, see how it works. So why this space, Chris? Uh, basically, because nowadays buying a commercial platform to manage research information, such as a, a Chris current research information system, as it is called, or RIMS uh, in the um, overseas environment, which is research information management system, is quite expensive and it binds your institution to a proprietary system. While well, this Chris is free, is open source, is compliant with open standards, is interoperable, is uh, open in the sense that it provides uh, your public information available on the web, and it is uh, actually a sustainable and effective tool to manage, to let you manage manage your research information. What is research information, basically? It is uh, uh, researcher profiles, uh, it is uh, affiliations, it is uh, projects, collaborations, research outputs, metrics, and so on. And I will show this to you with a, a graphic approach. So, how to provide an integrated view of the research ecosystem. What you see here in the center of the page is a publication, representation of a publication. This is what usually is managed in institutional repositories, such as those repositories which are built with DSpace. So basically, research output, which is mainly publication. And uh, this is, uh, uh, the publications are described in, in this space as uh, metadata. Uh, with uh, a lot of information around it, which can become more important if it is described as an entity and linked to the publication, so that you can provide more information also about, for instance, the authors. Authors are affiliated, for instance, to departments. So, using departments as entities and linking them to uh, the um, researchers and to the publications, instead of uh, just describing them as metadata, you can provide rich information about departments too. And then departments may be part of the same institution, so at a higher level also the institution can be represented in this ecosystem. And then, you know, publications cite other publications or are cited, so there's metrics connected to publications and to researchers. And uh, uh, this means that uh, uh, you can also introduce this kind of information 
into the system using these space crits and uh, having them as entities and not as just uh, descriptions. Uh, research uh, publications usually are the product uh, of uh, a project, project activity. And the projects are made by groups, by persons, by institutions. So also projects have a, a rich array of links that can be provided if you describe these entities. Then uh, a research publication can be linked to research data and research data can be linked to, to authors. So it is um, a full system of links which is taking place uh, within this space Chris, where you have all these entities and you can provide rich descriptions. And uh, then, uh, you know, research data can be reused and enhanced, extended to produce uh, more publications which are linked to research groups and people. So this is uh, what you can do with this Pescris uh, compared to the simple description of publications that you usually do with this space. And then you can also make it beautiful. There is a, a you know, a possibility to customize your interface, so to make it uh, similar to your website and uh, to use the uh, new adaptive and responsive uh, user interface with icons for intuitive exploration, such as the icons which are used here to represent the uh, entities which are in the system, such as the people, the faculty, departments, and so. Uh, you can uh, use uh, widgets, as you see in the bottom of this page, for the most viewed, most cited items. And then, of course, uh, um, at the end of this year, beginning of next year, we will have the new uh, user interface with this page which is uh, completely rewritten using angular js and uh, also this space chris of course will have it uh, let me just show you a few very few use cases just to see how they are represented uh, items are represented within this space chris so this is a standard uh, this space item which has uh, some uh, peculiarities which are typical of a space Chris. For instance, here you can uh, see that the authors have a small icon, so they're not, not just descriptions, but there's a full page about the authors that we will see later. And it is connected to the item, of course, to this publication. Uh, the system is full of links, uh, actionable links, such as the DOI, of course. Uh, persistent identifiers are a very crucial component of this architecture. And then here you can see a, um, a rich array of, uh, of uh, information uh, related to this item, which is uh, how many citations it got from Scopus or Web of Science. The altmetric badge, which tells you how much it was uh, cited on uh, social media, such as Twitter, Faculty of Thousand, uh, uh, Mendeley, and so. Uh, related, of course, to, to research, the research environment. And also you see the page views, which are the internal metrics of the repository. So it provides statistics about how many times this uh, item was uh, viewed and downloaded uh, with uh, an update uh, for uh, weekly and, uh, and monthly uh, new numbers. And then we will see how all these numbers will be um, put together at the level of the researcher and then put together at the level of the department and the whole institution can gather all these uh, uh, metrics. This is a new feature. Uh, you know Core is a large uh, service provider uh, har harvesting literature from all repositories all around the world and also harvesting full text, uh, which is very relevant because now uh, uh, at the bottom of each item page in this space, Chris, you can configure this recommender, which tells you how many uh, related items uh, are there in the repository and also in core uh, at large, so that if you are interested in a specific piece of literature, you can find uh, uh, other relevant papers that uh, you may want to download and read and, uh, and consult for your research. Then there are some uh, new features uh, in this space case 6, which has just been uh, released, but uh, they are all supported back to the 5.7 for the uh, comfort of uh, those who are still on the version 5. 
signposting, for instance, which is an approach to make the scholarly web more friendly to machines, uh, exposing the relations in HTTP link headers. Then uh, um, some uh, of uh, some patterns that we are finalizing uh, in this pesky, such as the author or links uh, um, uh, to ORCID and VIAF uh, records, the identifiers uh, linked to ORCID uh, for, from the research pages uh, to the DOI from the landing page or full text and so, and the publication boundary. So there's a lot of new features that are available uh, for you in uh, this space Chris uh, latest uh, releases. This is a, a researcher page, as I announced before. Here you can see that uh, it's divided in tabs, so it can provide rich information about uh, a, a, a relevant number of uh, information. Uh, for instance, uh, here is the page of profile, but you also find a page devoted to the bibliometrics related to the author, the list of publications, the list of projects, and so on. And here you can also find uh, the links to other identifiers that he has in, uh, in different systems so that you can build a full ecosystem of uh, uh, related links uh, uh, within the repository and also outside. And then you have also these uh, buttons that uh, take you to see the network lab of this researcher, the statistics which are related to this researcher at the repository level, uh, some uh, functionalities such as the email alert or the RSS feeds, and a claim profile, which is very important because it takes you uh, directly to ORCID for authentication and also to uh, be able to exchange information about your uh, profile, about your publications and about your projects. And uh, here we have the bibliometrics page of these authors. And as you see, here we see a, an aggregation of the, the statistics that are related, uh, uh, statistics and numbers, in this case, the uh, citation numbers, which are related to this researcher. So the system is able to sum up all these citations that uh, uh, belong to each item who has, uh, which has the author, uh, the, this uh, researcher as an author. So you sum them up and then you can show the statistics uh, gathered at the, at the researcher level. And this, the same you can uh, do with the department as we will see. For instance, this is a list of publications. This is a, um, a list that is uh, uh, prepared with this space functionality, but also you can see there's uh, some nice uh, opportunities to export this list uh, using uh, the most uh, um, uh, popular bibliography formats uh, or also Excel files, send it via email uh, and, uh, and so. And this is uh, an example of the network or collaboration. Um, this is a normalized one with uh, similar distances, but then you can uh, also have a, a non-normalized uh, network, which is showing you uh, longer or shorter distances or uh, bigger or smaller points according to the, to the relevance of the relation. Here, for instance, if you highlight one of these uh, points, you you can see that this researcher has um, a publication, in, a set of publications in common with another colleague, and uh, then their co-author publications are 11. And if you click here, then you can see the whole list, the drill down of the, of the uh, data that uh, produced this uh, network. And this is uh, also, uh, all, all this is automatically um, built by, by the system, of course. Here you see a page uh, about uh, the, the statistics. Uh, there's, uh, as you see, there's a lot of tabs, the view count, download count, item view, item download. Then the, you may have the statistics uh, seen by the region, the country, uh, along a, a time distance. Now, just for sake of uh, speed, I uh, will just show you this slide uh, with a graphic interpretation, uh, but uh, there's uh, many more possibilities that you can see just from this um, from this page, of course. And um, this is a, an example of a department page where you can see all the researchers that are uh, affiliated with this department, and this is built uh, on the fly, starting from the information uh, coming from the uh, the master source, which is the, of course, the HR uh, legacy system in the university. And uh, uh, for instance, here is a, a list of the 
the publications for all the researchers who are affiliated to this uh, um, to this department. And now uh, going to the uh, claim profile and the ORCID authentication, I will uh, ask Andrea to continue. He has uh, some more uh, technical details to tell you, and uh, uh, and then uh, um, I will uh, uh, finish the presentation a little bit later with some more information. Okay, thank you, Sanna. I will share my screen. Okay, so I was going to show you uh, some of the public face of the space Chris, but of course uh, you need to also to interact with the system. The system allows you to collect information in several ways. We will show you uh, some examples. Uh, one of the ways is also to provide uh, um, a way for the researcher to provide itself uh, some information. So in the case of the researcher profile, uh, the researcher can claim a, a specific profile on the system uh, just guessing uh, the email address that is associated with this profile or using the, um, the ORCID login. So the system is fully integrated with ORCID depending on the level of your uh, um, API. So if you are an ORCID member, you have access to the member API. If you are only um, an ORCID fan, you can just use the, the ORCID public API. And also using the ORCID public API, you can provide to your researcher the ability to log in into the system using the ORCID credential. And uh, using the ORCID credential, they can uh, get control of uh, their profile of the system. So to supply additional information like research interest, biography, and so on. But you can do much more if you are uh, an ORCID member and if you have a member uh, API. So what you can do is to facilitate creation of new ORCID record. Uh, your researcher can start from the system following uh, um, the information are already here, maybe because you have an integration with your legacy HR system that have imported some of the information, and this information can, go, uh, can be pushed to ORCID, so to facilitate your ORCID profile creation. Uh, another integration is at the time of the submission, when your researcher uh, input information about the publication, or your librarian act as proxy uh, provide a proxy service for your researchers to input the new publication, they can look up in the ORCID registry and associate a specific publication with uh, um, the, the exact researcher that I have authored uh, this publication. Once you do that, you can also transfer information from the repository to the ORCID registry and vice versa. So this means that uh, you can have a publication in uh, this space Chris repository and this record can be pushed uh, back to ORCID. And uh, you will see that it is possible also to opposite direction. So you have something in the ORCID registry as a publication or uh, additional information on your research profile, and you can import such information in this space case. And of course, you can log in uh, using your ORCID credential. And this is quite convenient if you want to provide an easy way for external code or to log in into the system and interact with your data. So here you see um, what happened when a uh, space case publication is sent to ORCID. Uh, your researcher have had to um, have had given uh, permission to the space Chris to uh, populate uh, his profile. And when the space Chris uh, pushed this information, a notification is sent in the um, inbox of, uh, of the ORCID profile saying that uh, uh, the record has been modified by the space Chris. And you will see in uh, your um, profile in the works area, a new record that is coming from the space case. And more importantly, you have the URL field uh, filled with information with the identifier of the space case. 
so that if you have also the same record coming from Scopus or Web of Science or any other uh, bio, uh, bibliography uh, database, you have created a connection between your uh, published version and your open access version so that your ORCID profile now provides a link to your open access content. And you can also import from external source. Uh, a new feature of the uh, DSpace uh, 5.7 or uh, DSpace 6, uh, DSpace Chris 6, will be the ability to import from ORCID. So you can search for an ORCID ID and you will get the full list of publications present in the ORCID profile. And you can pick just one and import such publication uh, in DSpace Chris. And of course, you can attach to this uh, bibliography record uh, your uh, full text uh, that could be to print or to publish a version. Uh, you can decide to use this space Chris to promote uh, to open access. That is uh, what we strongly advocate. But you can also decide to uh, keep in this space Chris uh, published version of embargoed uh, full text. So the interoperability of this space Chris is not, of course, limited to ORCID, uh, but uh, you can uh, uh, connect this space Chris with several systems, and all of that save a lot of time to your researcher. So, for instance, you can connect this space Chris with PubMed, PubMed Europe, Scopus, Web of Science, Archive, Crossref, and many more. And there is a general framework that allows you to extend this integration and to build uh, very fastly your own integration with other systems. One of the interesting features of the Space Chris is the ability to automatically feed new information from external data source. Out of the box, this uh, feature is enabled for Scopus, Web of Science, and uh, PubMed Europe. So this means that you can just configure a um, default query that allow you to automatically search this data source for, for a new record with your affiliation. So for instance, any new record from the university of uh, sample or sample university. So you can uh, set up your query uh, mm, listing your uh, affiliation in uh, several different ways because we know that uh, a precise accurate definition of the affiliation is uh, uh, very difficult and uh, in this database there is not a uniform way to refer to a specific university. So once you have configured this, uh, this query, the system will automatically search every night for new records from this external source and uh, mm, any funding will be uh, pro uh, proposed uh, to you to, to be imported into the system. So that you can also discard fake positive or enrich the information providing, uh, adding the, uh, the full text record, uh, the full text file or the open access, uh, the open access version. And most important, where the data source provides access to the full text, as in the case of PubMed Europe, you can also import automatically the full text into the system. This is, of course, not the case for Scopus or Web of Science that are just uh, uh, bibliographic information, uh, bibliographic database. And uh, the connection, the integration is not limited to publication. You can integrate uh, external data source with the space Chris related to any kind of entities. Uh, one very common use case is the integration between the space Chris and a HR system so that you can provide uh, rich information of, about your research, your department automatically without the need to additional input uh, in the system. And you are not limited to um, just a way of the integration. So you can have some information coming from the external data source and other information provided uh, manually in the system. So you can combine the different approach. And 
the last convenient, very convenient way to import information in Display Scripts is using Spreadsheet. Spreadsheet is, of course, not the most accurate way to collect information, but we know that it is one of the most convenient. And it is in use in uh, many research offices, many departments. So you have very rich, very uh, important information already stored on Spreadsheet at your university. That now, uh, right now, you can uh, just uh, make more important and more relevant using uh, interpretate form and transposing them with the space Chris. So the space Chris data model is very flexible and we just touched very uh, briefly this functionality with Susanna, but what you can do is to uh, create your own uh, data model and make connection between any entity with uh, any other. One of the most important uh, Think about the flexible, the flexible data model of the space Chris is the ability to manage identifier. So you can manage identifier at a whole level. You have identifier for publication like DOI or Endol, but you also have identifier for researchers such as the ORCID or for organization like uh, the reason identifier. And of course, you also have identifier for projects, for funder, for journal, and so on. In this case, I will show you an example of a uh, um, dataset record in the space Chris, where you can see uh, the full data model, the flexibility of data model uh, in this context. The dataset record is linked to person, so you have more accurate information about the author of the dataset, you have the identifier of the author, the biography, and so on. You have the relation with the project where this data set uh, was uh, produced, and you have the uh, reference to the publication that have used such uh, data set. And when you create the connection between the data set and the publication, the system is automatically, uh, automatically had a backlink from your publication to your data set so that you can uh, automatically navigate in both direction your database and you can have also the connection like uh, information about the event where uh, this publication of this data set has been presented and so on but when we talk about data set more important than the bibliography, bibliography information are the data set uh, itself the raw data so when you need to manage the raw data, you need to have a, a specific functionality depending on the kind of research data that you are managing. Uh, for tabular data, we have recently uh, released uh, as open source a uh, future integration for the space Chris. That is an integration between the space Chris and CCAN. CCAN is uh, one of the most uh, used open source data management platform in the world. And uh, it is, uh, you do a very great job to managing the tabular data. So thanks to this integration, what you get is then in a typical uh, display item record, you have to download the, uh, the full text or the data uh, just as a bit. So in this case, you have 150 megabytes tabular data, you should download this very large CSV file. But using such integration, you have another option to explore online that allow you to visualize uh, such data in a paginated and filterable way. So you can have a quick preview of your data, you can check, you can sort, and you can search your data to uh, to know better if this data set is something that uh, you are interested in and uh, is useful for your research. And the platform also provides some facility to uh, make a graph on your data, so you can uh, uh, fastly uh, draw a bar graph or a line chart and so on using the data in uh, your uh, tabular file or you can have a geographic uh, geospatial visualization in the case your uh, tabular data include uh, such kind of information. 
this is quite convenient and this is um, an effective way to provide uh, a preview tool for other researcher maybe at your university or at your institution or external institution that can get a preview of the data set uh, in your uh, repository and decide if they want to uh, get in touch with your researcher to have more information and maybe to access the full uh, data set the full information one important fact about this integration is then uh, your researchers uh, both the submitter the, the one that have produced the data set and uh, the one that they need to use the data set only interact with uh, this base case so they don't need to know about Sikan. Sikan in this case had uh, as a, a backend database uh, something like uh, oracle or postgres uh, so it's just a tool, a technical tool where some information are stored. And the integration between this place, Chris and Sican is done using the uh, REST API of Sican. This makes uh, um, uh, very sustainable to the maintenance of this tool because it is based on not uh, interoperability layer and also provide the ability to add uh, the security, to enforce security access to your data uh, through this base case. You can decide in this base case if your uh, WR data are open access or restricted or under embargo, and this condition will be enforced also in the preview tool and so on. And most important, uh, this space Chris, as uh, any this space installation, is well integrated with long-term strategy and with uh, long-term preservation tool, uh, like for instance, uh, the cloud. So you can uh, also couple your system with such kind of tool and provide long-term preservation strategies also for your um, data set. Of course, the tabular data is one of the most important example of data but it's not the only one and uh, image files are one of the uh, important uh, example of data set are very used in medicine astrophysics cultural heritage and so on. in this case the uh, repository community have found that the triplef protocols and format are the, the best uh, way to provide a uh, rich tool to uh, the researcher. Why? Because an astrophysics image can go over five gigabyte, or in any case, high quality scanned book or uh, high quality image typically go over 100 megabyte for each single image. And you also need to um, manage the uh, complex structure of image sequence uh, that are very relevant for the research. Uh, this could be the structure of a manuscript or uh, the sequence of uh, uh, the evolution of a phenomena, phenomena in a medical image and so on. So in this case, again, instead you just download the very large image, so one, uh, 100 megabytes of image in such case, you have a C online option. And this option, uh, allow you to open an embedded player that is triple uh, compliant. So this embedded player that is based on another open source project that is Universal Viewer, allow you using the triple image API uh, to have a smooth integration interaction with your image file. So you can zoom in your uh, file, you can have a fast preview of your file just getting the best resolution that you are able to manage on your current device. If you are looking to this image on a mobile phone, you don't need to, the wall uh, the wall size image. But also, if you are looking to the wall picture on your desktop, you typically need a scaled uh, image. When you need to zoom on a specific detail, you will get this region at the best resolution. So, an ideal resolution so that you can. Um, understand better what you are seeing. And uh, the WF presentation API allow you to embed um, metadata together with your uh, image. This is quite convenient because on the right side, you will see the metadata about the world source. So in this case, the metadata about a, book, uh, a scanned book, uh, uh, an ancient book. 
Uh, and this allow you to keep control about your resources because if you also embed this player or another place, if you reuse such content, uh, the reference to your uh, repository will stay here and uh, you will get proper attribution of your content. On the left side, instead, you see uh, the structure of your digital objects. So in this case, you have a sequence of different chapter uh, of your uh, digitalized book. But this can be also more complex. And if you have a large PDF file that is uh, digitalized, uh, on the left, you can see an hierarchy uh, table of contents, so a more uh, complex structure of your uh, image sequence. And on the right side, you will see that uh, also on the singles, the very specific file, you can have um, technical metadata like uh, the format, the uh, checksum, and uh, many other. Another uh, um, very convenient uh, uh, functionality of the WPF protocol is the ability to keep together uh, images with textual layer. So in this case, you see that uh, it is possible to search uh, in your uh, digitalized book for ACOCR uh, uh, content, and you can visualize uh, transcription or annotation. And these are highlighted uh, also on, uh, in the image when you find uh, something. And this is provided by the use of the WPF search API. This is an open, uh, an open standard. So it worked perfectly also uh, with uh, right to left language like uh, um, Arabic and so on. The most important thing is then uh, using this kind of technology, the WPF, uh, you have the ability to share and use your content without loss uh, to control of your resources. So your resources stay at your digital library but you have um, a AAAF manifest that is a JSON format, a JSON file where your resources and the service that you provide on these resources are described. And just sharing this information, this metadata about your resource and your service, other, um, other library, other repository can embed your resources without the need to copy your digital content in, uh, from, from your repository to uh, the asset. This is a big uh, swift in, uh, uh, in the paradigm is very different than uh, what we uh, typically do using YPMH, where we collect uh, the metadata and we try to grab uh, the full text from a repository to, uh, to keep in another one. Using this protocol, you can have your repository, uh, ha, um, your repository act as a node or in a distributed network. And this is something that uh, uh, is very aligned with uh, what we propose in the next generation repository working group of core. So the, any open access repository is a node in a distributed uh, network of, scholarly, uh, of the scholarly communication. A very similar use case also for um, audio and video file. So in the case uh, of social science or medicine, audio and video are a very common uh, data set. And uh, also in this case, you need to provide the ability for streaming and for annotate and commenting on uh, your video file. To do that, we provide uh, support for an open standard that is MPEG Dash. So the MPEG Dash is uh, just uh, very similar to TPDF, provide you something that is independent by any vendor, and uh, you are not coupled with uh, Adobe Media Server or any other media server. You can implement it just using an open uh, source stack. You can find uh, more about that on our website in the section related to the add-on, uh, because this is something that is not yet released as open source, but we are looking for uh, partner institutions to work together to be able to release all these uh, uh, additional stuff as, as uh, open source. And I want to just uh, 
conclude my uh, presentation, my part of the presentation with uh, an overview of the architecture. In the current Space Crease architecture, the Space Crease 5, what you have is uh, essentially uh, the Space Crease as a fork of the space that enlarge and uh, the functionality. The space, the standard space is something uh, in the middle of the Space Crease that uh, we build around it. And we need to embed uh, this space in, uh, inside the space crease. So there is a, a very strong coupling between the, the space crease uh, API and the space API. But uh, there is an existing gap of functionality that right now are provided by the space crease that could be very useful for uh, the world community. I'm thinking about uh, the better statistics that we provide, the, the duplication uh, functionality, the automatically feed from Scopus, Web of Science, and PubMed that are not really related to the Chris world, but could be beneficial for the work community. To do that, what we expect in the Space 7 is uh, um, to uh, align the Space Chris uh, again with uh, to the Space 7 uh, development. So with the Space Crease 7, what we expect is to have uh, some Crease API that will play very nicely with the REST API that we are building for the Space 7, and a new user interface that will be the natural extension of the uh, Angular user interface of the Space 7. So the Space Crease 7 will be completely aligned with the Space 7 development and will be uh, much easier to maintain and uh, easier to integrate with the Space 7. So I will ask Susanna to just summarize and conclude the uh, presentation. Susanna? Okay, can you hear me? Yes, now, yes. Okay, uh, so I will um, I will conclude with some uh, more questions, uh, such as uh, where to implement this best crease. Universities and research centers uh, can benefit from collecting, managing, preserving, and disseminating all information information which is uh, around uh, research and uh, research performance. Um, we will talk in the future about galleries, libraries, museums and archives because we have uh, created a sort of a flavor of this space Chris which is called this space glam and uh, well, this will be the topic of a, of a future webinar. And um, uh, let me see how to proceed with this. It's blocked. Okay, uh, just uh, three examples uh, of creative usage of this space Chris. For instance, um, uh, the uh, Spanish National Research Council is using this space Chris as a front end for the internal Chris. So uh, this is another use case where you, you already have a proprietary Chris or a homemade Chris, but you want to have a better interface to show your um, information uh, outside. Then. You could use this space crease with an ontological approach, such as the uh, National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology, where uh, atmosphere, cryosphere, hydrosphere, and so on are the main uh, access points to the information which is contained in the uh, crease system. And uh, for instance, the Portal Recerca in uh, Catalonia is a harvester of all the research uh, which is done in uh, uh, Catalan universities, and it is made with this space crease. It is a serif compliant, which is another feature of the interoperability of this space crease that we haven't mentioned before. But it is very powerful because it is a complete data model that can make your uh, research information exchangeable with other institutions at the local and at a central level and uh, uh, so how to do it so the 
installation of this space crease is as simple as this space. You can upgrade your this space to this space crease, and uh, uh, your publications will not change, will be safely managed as before, but you will have the advantage of linking them to other relevant information, such as we've already seen. And uh, um, when to do it, I mean, there's no particularly appropriate moment to do that. You can, uh, as uh, Andrea said, also benefit from uh, this space crease, even though you are still just managing your publications. And uh, uh, then, uh, of course, uh, in the future, you can also go back from this space crease to this space, but I'm sure we are very confident that you will not want to do that after you've uh, tested this space crease. Um, here is just to say a few numbers uh, of this base crease in a nutshell. We've just released the sixth version, as I said, so I invite you to participate in our testathon. This is the link to the test uh, uh, installation where you can uh, help us um, post debugging it if uh, needed and uh, uh, there are some uh, many installations of this space crease worldwide this is as I said the only open source crease so which is maintained in the context of the Dura space community which is uh, a vast and authoritative community worldwide here is the link to our documentation the webinar is recorded so you can retrieve it back uh, whenever and we will publish the slides and uh, in the end, uh, who, who are we? We are a registered service provider at For Science. We have two DSpace committers. Uh, Andrea is the lead of the REST API sub team for DSpace 7. We have uh, uh, also developers uh, working at a new Angular JS uh, uh, user interface. We have a member in the steering group, and we have really been working a lot for a long time and with uh, other communities. Um, and the international level in open source, open standards, interoperability, and so on. So I hope with this to have uh, given you a, um, a, a way to, uh, I mean, a sound reasons to adopt uh, this space Chris now. Here you can find some information where to find us next. So I hope that we still have time to answer some of your questions, if uh, any.